Hello, in this example, we will learn how to simulate a magnet array. Let's first create a magnet array consisting of five magnets. Each of these magnets have a dimension of one inch by one inch by one inch. So let's just go ahead and dimension the magnets. And then because we are doing a 2D simulation, I'm going to create a surface. Okay, here is my first magnet. So let us use the pattern feature to duplicate the magnets. So we would like to have total of five magnets. So we have five instances and then they're going to have one inch and we select this one. So here I have a magnet array consisting of five different magnets. Last but not the least, we need to be able to define the air geometry around the magnet. To do that, I'm going to again take the front plane and then locate a center point for my rectangle and then create a large enough air geometry. Let me also convert the entities at the extremities of the magnet so that I can have the air geometry as one single surface. So I go to surface planar. Alright, so I have five magnets and the air geometry here. With this, the geometry completion is achieved. Let's go to EMS 2D, EMWorks 2D, and then let us define this study. As before, we create a study. It's going to be magnetostatic study. But before I do that, we need to create what is known as a coordinate system. So let me create a coordinate system at this corner. We have the X and the Y direction here. Say OK. So now let's go ahead and create the study. We have a magnetostatic study. I go to the 2D geometry. I pick the coordinate system that I want and select OK to create the new study. Now I need to define materials to the various surfaces here. So let's okay, let's do the air geometry first. I from my favorite material I apply air and then I pick the five different magnets, apply materials, I open permanent magnet folder, open the neodymium magnet, let's pick N4212. Here is the properties of the magnet, I say apply and close. I'll zoom in to the magnet and then we need to So let's pick each of these magnets and assign them a direction. So I'm going to pick this magnet. I'm going to assign a coercivity direction. The coordinate system is coordinate system 1. And I want this magnet to have along the y direction. I show a preview. And I say OK. So now you can see the direction of the first magnet. Now second magnet, I go apply coercivity direction. This is along the x-axis. I select the coordinate system. I show a preview and I zoom in. So you can now see 
the direction for the second magnet. Similarly, let me just select the third magnet, assign the direction along y axis and now I want to reverse the direction so that it is in the negative y axis. Let's show preview. So here I have the directions for the first three magnets and then let's do the directions for the next two. Coercivity, <coughs> coordinate system along the x-axis but now I'm going to reverse. In the last magnet it's along the positive y again. Coercivity direction, coordinate system, So here I have the five magnets and the associated direction of coercivity for each of these magnets. With this I have set up the problem. Now we can run the simulation to understand the magnetic flux distribution due to this magnet array. So let's go ahead and take a look at the mesh. So I'm going to right click and say create mesh and again this slider helps me to define the mesh density. The fine, as I move the slider towards the fine, I'm going to have more mesh and as I move it towards the coarse, I'm going to have less mesh. So you can reset it and keep it as default or if you would like it a little bit finer, you could apply fine mesh. Another option that is available is also to determine the element growth rate. This determines the size at which the mesh grows. So now you could have it say for example 1.1 and then say OK. So it will now create a mesh that we can visualize. As you can see it's applied a very fine mesh close to on the magnets and as we move away from the magnet it applies a gradually increasing mesh size. Now this looks good and then we are ready to run the simulation. Right click on study one, select run. Okay, once the simulation, um, the solving is completed, we can now take a look at the results. Let's go ahead and save the document. That's a good practice. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the results. I think the results that are of interest to us is to understand the flux distribution. And I always do that in a 2D plot, in a 2D simulation using the magnetic vector potential. I right click and um, use the contour line format. This will immediately give me the magnetic flux lines. As you can see through the distribution of these flux lines, how it varies in the bottom side of the magnet and how it varies in the top side of the magnet. So this particular magnet array behaves in such a way that there is a lot of magnetic flux or a lot of force will be generated in the downside bottom to the magnet compared to the top of the magnet and this can be easily visualized using these flux lines that you see here. One can also take a look at the magnetic flux density now this is how the magnetic flux as well as in, uh, in, in Tesla is, is going to be distributed. As you can see here, a lot of blue area shows very low magnetic flux density in the top versus um, more higher magnetic flux density in the bottom. One can also do what is known as a vector plot. So I can right click on magnetic flux density select vector plot and say no clipping. Now you can actually look at the magnetic flux density as vector. So as I zoom in here you can see these vectors and um, how they vary. So you can see uh, the vectors going much deeper in the bottom side whereas they are very close to the magnet in the top side. So this really behaves, this magnet array has a property where you have quite a lot of magnetic flux and force being exerted on any steel object in the bottom as compared to the top. This is, will be the topic of the 
next video where we will assemble a couple of steel pieces one in the top and one in the bottom and compare the force due to this magnet array on these steel bars.